The movie The Day After Tomorrow is based very loosely on a hypothesis that increased global warming will trigger another ice age. It's a theme that's also been taken up by the media. But in this video, as always, I want to look at the science and compare it to the hype. So let's start with Wally Broker, who postulated that increasing meltwater flowing south from Greenland would interrupt the Gulf Stream. That's the current that brings warm water up from the Caribbean to the North Atlantic, and most climatologists agree keeps Western Europe warm in winter. Normally the Gulf Stream gets more salty as water evaporates on the journey northwards. Since salty water is dense, it sinks in the North Atlantic, forming a deep sea current that makes the return journey southwards. This is known as the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, which is part of a much larger thermohaline circulation extending around the world. But meltwater from Greenland is fresh water. If that mixes with the Gulf Stream, then the salt content is diluted and the water no longer sinks. The result would be a slowdown or even a shutdown of the AMOC. Western Europe would experience the same kinds of winters as Canada. Evidence from the past supports the idea because the same thing has happened several times, most recently at the end of the last glaciation. The probable cause of what's known as the Younger Dryas was a huge lake of melted ice in North America that burst its banks and spilled into the Atlantic. Oceanographers say it's likely increasing amounts of meltwater will begin to slow down the ocean's circulation system, but not in the next few decades. It'll take at least a hundred years for there to be enough meltwater to do that. Even so, they began to monitor the strength of the Atlantic circulation. In 2005, researchers at the National Oceanography Centre in Britain surveyed the Atlantic and compared their findings with records going back to 1957. Now, the figures had to be extrapolated because previous surveys had recorded different criteria, but the results suggested that the deep current taking cold water south had slowed 30%. The tabloid press, of course, immediately hyped the story. Is Britain on the brink of a new ice age? asked one British newspaper. The body of the story answered the question unequivocally. As the Gulf Stream that warms our shores falters, was the first line. The story went on. This week's news that the Gulf Stream has abruptly begun to weaken could be one of the most important and most devastating scientific observations ever to hit the headlines. Researchers at the National Oceanographic Centre in Southampton, who have measured the strength of the current far out into the Atlantic, have found that it has slowed by a massive 30%. But there was no data to show whether the slowdown, even if it was real, was anything abnormal or permanent. Science is sceptical by nature. Most scientists don't jump to conclusions, especially based on just one inconclusive study. RealClimate.org, a blog run by climate scientists, warned that while continued monitoring of this key climatic area is clearly warranted, the imminent chilling of Europe is a ways off yet. Gavin Schmidt, a climate modeler at the Goddard Institute for Space Studies, and Richard Woods, chief oceanographer at the Hadley Centre in Britain, both said the same thing, that a decline in circulation should have produced a decline in European surface temperatures, but it hadn't so it's likely that even the result itself was erroneous. Robert Dixon of the British Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science told the New York Times that much more data was needed to determine whether a slowdown was underway. Even Harry Bryden, lead author of the study, was cautious about his own results. He told New Scientist he wasn't yet sure if the change was temporary or signals a long-term trend. But caution and caveats are not what sell news stories. Critics of the anthropogenic climate change theory often accuse the media of alarmism, and this is a prime example. When Bryden and his colleagues checked newly installed sensors a few months later as part of a follow-up study, the results were more ambiguous. We've got a variable signal, but it's too early to detect any trends, Bryden told New Scientist in a story titled No New Ice Age for Western Europe. You couldn't get a clearer headline than that. Carl Wunsch, an oceanographer at MIT, was quoted as saying, it's a complicated story reduced to a fairy tale. And yet the mainstream media was still fixated on the idea of an imminent shutdown. Sea change, why global warming could leave Britain feeling the cold, was the headline in The Guardian. In 2007, the full results of the follow-up study were published, and it confirmed the preliminary 2006 results, showing a huge variation in the speed of the thermohaline circulation. 
Even if the 30% slowdown found in 2005 was real, it could easily be part of this natural variation, which is what prominent climate scientists had been saying all along. Then in March 2010, researchers from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory used other data to measure the circulation, including satellite altimetry, and found no significant change between 2002 and 2009. So the Daily Mail fearlessly busted the media's Ice Age fear-mongering. New climate change myth! Gulf Stream is not slowing down. Fears that global warming will shut down the Gulf Stream and plunge Britain into a mini ice age are unfounded, a study shows. Some environmentalists have argued that global warming could shut off the stream, sending temperatures spiralling down across Europe as they rise elsewhere. Hang on, it was the media that was telling us that global warming would shut off the Gulf Stream, and they didn't get that from environmentalists. If the Daily Mail wants to name and shame those who created the myth, it should start with this piece of hysterical nonsense from 2005. OK, who printed it? Why, shock horror, it was the Daily Mail. Obviously, in its outrage that we'd all been hoodwinked by yet another myth, the Mail forgot that it had helped start the myth five years earlier with this kind of scaremongering rubbish. Without the Gulf Stream, Britain would be scarcely habitable. Its broad acres would turn to tundra and winter temperatures would plunge to minus 20 degrees centigrade. The Daily Mail could easily have checked with climate scientists to see if this was at all likely. It could have read the science media, which managed to get the story right. Instead, it drew its own conclusions based on a limited understanding of the scientific method and ramped up the hype. It is hard to imagine the devastating effect such a climatic flip would have on our tightly populated islands and on the world as a whole. Civilization could scarcely survive it. Now, five years on, the Daily Mail is railing against a myth of its own making. The idea that a slowdown of the ocean currents would trigger such a rapid change in climate is pure fantasy, explained Dr. Willis. Well, yes, but four years earlier, Carl Wundt had told New Scientist exactly the same thing, except he had called it a fairy tale. Where was the Daily Mail then? I guess reporters were too busy having one last shag in anticipation that civilization was about to end. The Daily Mail wasn't the only one to help create a myth, then turn around five years later to disown it, and have the Schutzpah to blame someone else. Britain's Daily Telegraph also went overboard on Bryden's 2005 study. The discovery has alarmed scientists because ancient climate records show that northern air temperatures can drop by up to 10 degrees centigrade within decades of the circulation slowing or even stopping. But despite quoting two experts in the story, the Telegraph failed to find a single one who said he was alarmed. The alarm seemed to be sounded by the Telegraph itself. The changes in the Atlantic currents would cause average temperatures over Britain to fall by up to 6 degrees centigrade in as little as 20 years. No prizes for guessing the Telegraph stance five years on, when it had to report that scientists were not predicting any such thing. Research suggests that fears that Britain could be plunged into an ice age by a waning Gulf Stream are unfounded. The findings call into question theories proposed by some environmentalists that global warming could shut down the stream, causing temperatures to fall dramatically in Europe. But this theory wasn't proposed by some environmentalists. The Telegraph based its story on a study by the Oceanography Centre, which it didn't understand, and then added its own speculation based on a poor understanding of climate science. Broca's theory, actually a hypothesis, has remained unchanged and unchallenged throughout this saga, and it doesn't say we're about to be plunged into another ice age. The smokescreen and spin put out by some of the media, whether they're hyping the science or trying to undermine it, make it harder and harder to get across the reality that's turning up in the research. Oceanographers say a slowdown of the thermohaline circulation is at least a hundred years away, although that depends on the Greenland ice sheet continuing to melt at the current rate. Many glaciologists say it's likely to accelerate. Even if and when it happens, not one of the models predicts what the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph call an ice age. You know, Britain scarcely habitable, civilization scarcely surviving it. 
Oceanographers say the world isn't facing the same situation it did 12,500 years ago when it was coming out of a glaciation and global temperatures were much cooler. So even if and when a slowdown happens, the Mail's prediction that another ice age would cover Britain in permanently frozen soil is nothing more than tabloid journalists drawing their own conclusions. Does all this sound familiar? The 1970s myth about an imminent ice age was also largely the work of the media, for which scientists are now getting the blame. How long do you think before people are proclaiming the Daily Mail a champion of truth for busting a myth that those fraudulent scientists started?